Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Friday Night Bible Club. Today we are going to be milking cows. Yes, we're going to see a milking cow farm and tell you a story all about milking cows. Here we go. <laughs>
34 verse 10. Brilliant song to finish. Let's go to the farm and we're going to learn about milking cows and we're going to go up to the north coast near Bush Mills tonight. Here we go. These are wee calves. They're just born about a month ago. These are little heifer calves. And in about two years' time, they will be uh, mothers, they'll be cows, they'll be milk. On this farm, they're milking over 200, almost 300 cows. And the wee baby bull calves are sold off to other, other farmers. But each of these, when they grow up, they'll give about eight or 9,000 litres of milk a year. So you can see this pen here is full of little newborn calves up to a month old. Wonderful. So these little calves here, they're, they're sucking this little teat in here. It's powdered milk and it's warm and it's here all the time so the wee calves can come in 24 hours a day. They just keep coming. They can drink fresh water, they can drink fresh milk. From here, you see the milk coming out and then they eat meal. So they're growing as fast as they possibly can. They're very, very healthy calves, lovely straw beds. And they'll even suck your finger. Look at this here. See? See that way they suck your finger? They're friendly little calves. We should bring some of these into our classroom and school. You would like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> so we're in the field with these cows. These are the happiest cows in Northern Ireland. They're in calf, they're expecting a baby calf. In two months time they're going to get birth and then the, the calves will be taken from them, fed off the powder milk, and then the cows can be milked for months and months and months, given milk for us to drink and have our breakfast or cereal. So this is the food. The cows have been separated and here is a lovely herd of cows. On this farm there's 300 milking cows. These are heifers. These uh, animals are about a year old and about another uh, three or four months the bull will come in and then about nine months after that they'll, they'll become mummies and they'll be taken into the milking parlor and be able to milk. So you can see the, the wee calves, you've got the heifers, then you've got the mummy cows and that's happening every year as the herd uh, it grows and grows and grows. So these ones are about a year old, enjoying the grass, enjoying the nice view of the sea and they're happy cattle on this farm. These cows have just been milked and now they're the night milking 60 cows at a time, 30 up each side. And they all go out, hello cows! And then another 30, 30 of them in for each side. So we're in the milking parlor now. And you can see all the cows right down here. Over 300 cows been milking this farm. And milking is very important. They can milk in the morning and the evening. Some farmers even milk the cows three times a day. And you can see the milk, look. It's very, very important. And all of us like our milk, especially in the morning whenever we're getting our breakfast. Our cereal. Can be Weetabix or cornflakes or cocoa nuts or porridge or ready back. When I was a wee boy, I remember we used to get our, uh, my dad had a cow, one cow, and he would milk it every day, twice a day. And we live uh, every night for a dinner. We would have milk pudding, custard, semolina, rice, tapioca, all sorts of milk pudding. But the milk's important for a, a baby. Whenever a baby calf is born, it needs the, the beasting or the, the first milk coming from a cow. Otherwise, if it doesn't get that, the wee calf will die. It's like a baby when it's born, it needs its mother's milk. It doesn't, if you give a wee baby a steak or milk, the wee baby will take the milk. The steak's no good to it. Chocolate's no good to it. It needs the milk. And the Bible talks about milk. It talks about the Peter about the, the sincere milk of the Word of God and it's so, so important. What do you think of the milk? Well, have a close of it. Just have to be careful here. Here something falls. All the cows are numbered. And if you can see around the cattle, have got a collar around your neck. Today, the farming is quite uh, sophisticated. They know all the details of every single cow, exactly what a cow is eating, how much milk uh, a cow is producing, when it's in cow, when it's going to cow. But here, they're brought in every day, twice a day for milking. And it's so important that the cows are milked. 
And whenever a wee baby is born, it needs the milk. And the Bible talks about that, about how important it is to get the sincere milk of the Word of God. We can talk about the deep things of God, the important things of God, but the simple things of God for children. Bible stories, learning about the Lord Jesus Christ and why He came into this world, why He went to the cross, why it's so important to understand when Jesus went to the cross, it was enough when He laid down His life to take away our sins, we can be forgiven. And when that happens, you ask God to forgive you, you become a Christian, a child of God, you become a newborn baby in the Lord Jesus, and you start to drink milk. That's when you start to take the basic, the simple things of the Word of God. And the more you read, the more you pray, the more you learn about God, you'll get more and more hungry, and your appetite will grow to learn more and more uh, about God. And the more you read and pray and learn, the more you will want to read and pray, pray and enjoy and praise and sing God. So when I see a farm and see cows been milk, it reminds me of the, of the Word of God and the importance of the simplicity and the, how important the milk is for a baby. It's so important for me and so important for you and for everyone to learn the simple things about God. Around here, the farmers, some of them sell their own milk, not just the big uh, milk glory comes to take the milk away to the creamery, but they sell the milk and they pasteurize it here themselves. So I'm going to taste some of it. You have to pay for it, of course. You put the money in here, it's going to be one liter. And hopefully, oh yes, look at this here. The milk straight from the cow into the machine and it's going to go down there. I can use this in my cereal, I can use it in my tea, my coffee, and I'm also going to make a milkshake. It's nice and cold too. Mmm. Smells like nice fresh milk over here. Yes. There's a cup. This farm even got for, uh, what flavour? Strawberry. We shot a strawberry, put the milk in. Mmm, then you taste it. <sighs> Do you want some? Really, really enjoyed making that video of the farm, the milking the cows, and see how it all works. And I love milk. Do you like milk? Oh, so, so tasty. Now, let's sing our new song about the animals and God of creation, and we're going to go and tell you a story about two milking cows in the Bible. Does anyone know that story? Tell your story. God.
wonderful. I'm part of God's creation. He has a plan for me. The story of the milking cows. Yes, cows get milk. You think that's me? Could be you. It's a wee baby. Let's pray. I'm going to tell you something about this wee baby. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Friday night. Thank you for another week. How quickly it's gone past. Teach us tonight from your word and really encourage us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a wee baby. And if I was to bring a pizza in, I would love pizza. I love pizza. But this wee baby would say, no thank you. If I was to bring a big steak or McDonald's, or KFC, this wee baby would say, no thank you, or a packet of crisps, or chocolate, or sweets, the wee baby wouldn't know what to do. He, he's just happy to sleep. You know why? The only, the only thing that wee baby will drink, eat, chew, suck, is milk. Just like a wee calf drinks milk. We were talking about the cattle, about the cows being milk, the importance of milk. There's a Bible verse about milk in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Joanna likes to look after me. She likes to give me my milk. There's no steak or crisp. If I want a drink, I'll get it. Nice milk. Ah. Set that there for later. Milk. Yes. That wee baby would love a wee drink of milk. <laughs> Need to hold the wee baby to do that. That's it. Can you say this with me? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So just compare a wee baby. For a baby to grow, it needs to drink its mother's milk. Or a formula, it needs to drink milk. Not meat, not um, solid food, but liquid before it eats a solid, it needs to drink milk for its bones to grow, for the wee baby to develop and grow. Then, after it's used to drink in the milk, then it goes on to the more solid food, onto the onto meat. And whenever I, if Joanna said to me, Colin, let's have breakfast, I would say, What? Then she says, That's your lunch. Here we go. Come on. Then she said, That's your tea. I said, No, that's enough. Where's the Chinese phone number? That wouldn't be enough, but a wee baby, that's all at once, morning, noon and night, all day, all night, just give them milk. But whenever the wee baby starts to eat the solid food, no, it doesn't want to go back to the milk, it wants the meat, it wants the solid food, and then it wants the pizzas and the crisps and all the junk of the day. Solid food! It's like the Bible. Whenever you, you read the Bible, boys and girls, you love the wee Bible stories, the common Bible stories, the common Bible verses, but to grow as a Christian, you've got to have a desire to grow. And in order to grow, you need the milk, the milk of God's Word to grow, not just the basic things, but then to grow and develop, you need to have the meat, the deeper things of God to learn more about God and learn more about the Lord Jesus. Let's sing it said again. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Why? That you may grow thereby. Like a baby needs milk to grow. We need to. That's why we do Bible clubs, a Sunday school and assemblies. The children can grow in their knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2 verse 2. Right. What's the story about the two mocking cows? Did anyone know? I should have had a competition, a prize. If anyone knows this story, you could have won a prize. Well, it's in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. You read the introduction and then verse 10, right through this, finishes at 17. It talks about the Ark. The Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines from the Israelites. This was a time when Samuel was around and King Saul, the, king Saul was the king. And the, the Philistines beat the Israelites. They stole the Ark of the Covenant. Now they're thinking, you know, we need to return that because God, if their God's going to punish us. And everything was going wrong for the Philistine people. So they thought, we're going to return it. What shall we do? Well, we want to test if God is going to punish. If their God is going to punish so they said something very, very unusual. They said, let's get two cows. Two cows, yes. And two cows that have never, never, this goats, two cows that have never had a yoke upon them. In other words, have never pulled the cart before and also take their little born, newborn calves from them. Now, if you put a yoke on a cow uh, to pull a cart, it's going to go mad. 
because it hasn't been trained to do that. But if you take a calf away from a cow, the cow will roar and moo and go mad and it'll chase you and hit you with its head if it can. Now there are certain animals as you go around the world, you'll see some quite are quite funny. These are two little goats and they're pulling the little cart with the dogs on it. Then you have, you have many countries today, you'll see donkeys are working, they're putting all sorts of things on the road, like carts, like this one in Africa. Then you'll often see horses. When I first met Joanna in Poland, it was very common to see horses in the field, bringing in the grass, bringing in the hay, and in still parts of the world, you'll often see horses working. Some parts of the world, especially in Asia, you'll see cattle working, or cows and they'll be pulling a plow or pulling a cart. But these are heifers, or that are or bullocks mainly, male animals that are trained to work and trained to pull a cart, and they'll do that. Or here's a cut two cows, and they've been trained to walk through the streets to pull the cart, and the farmer, of course, is standing close by this farmer. But he possibly mulls these cows. They don't have calves because they would want to be with their little calves. So our story tonight is about two cows and the challenge was if they can take their carts with the Ark of the Covenant and they can walk on a straight line the whole way back to Israel it's a sign that God is not going to punish them and we're doing the right thing but if they turn back we are in deep deep trouble so here's two cows you can imagine the Bible times what the cows might have looked like pulling a cart or they, they, here this is probably putting a well, to put water up from a well, walking round and round in a circle, working hard. So this is the Ark of the Covenant. That represented in many ways the presence of God. In here was the, the two, the Ten Commandments, was Aaron's rod and different things, and that was very precious to the Israelite people. This was stolen whenever they lost the battle. Israelites now have it, and they said, we must give it back, or there God's going to punish us. As a people, so the, the challenge was to get two cows and they weren't allowed to turn back for their calves and they must walk on a straight line. That's impossible because I'm going to show you some cows and calves. If you go around the countryside and if you, if you see a cow with a calf, never go near that cow. It'll be worse than a bull. It will do anything to protect its little calf. It loves its little calf. The moment it gives birth, it's in love like any mother is with her child. Likewise, nature's a wonderful thing and animals are exactly the same. You don't want to get too close to a big cow. They're a massive animal. That cow will do anything to protect its little child, its little calf. Here's a little calf. You can see it's still wet. It's just been born and you don't want to go near that calf at all. Are you going to that cow, calf? The cow will do anything. You ask a farmer, and I know farmers who've been chased, who've been hit by a cow trying to do something to inject the calf or do something, and the cow thinks you're endangering the calf and it will do anything to rescue the wee calf. The wee calf will follow the mother, follow the cow, all sorts of cattle of freezing and limousine and... Um, all sorts of uh, Semitol, all sorts of Charlie, different Jersey cows, cattle, all sorts of cattle. You'll get them out happy as Larry, but don't touch their calves. And I grew up on a farm, and whenever the meat calves got a certain size, the time was to bring them off the cow, because the cow was getting short of milk. The calves were getting too big, and whenever you separated them, the cows would roar and bay, and they would sometimes break out of the field, doing anything to catch or to find their little calves whom they loved. Sometimes you had to lock them in for a day or a couple of days until they could, were so hungry they'd focus their energy on eating. But here's a cow, a little calf, and the size of the cow, you don't want to touch that calf. So the challenge was, take the cow, calves away from the cows and tell the cows, put a harness on them and tell them to walk. So they were asking the impossible. Here's a wee baby. That's what happens when a wee baby calf is just born. Nature instinct from the mother is to lick the little calf dry. Perfectly formed. Isn't our God a wonderful God? How God can use a cow and a bull and bring such a beautiful creature into the world. Perfectly formed with nose and eyes and colours and legs and ears. Within minutes... The little calf can stand up and walk around and skip and jump like a lamb. 
wonderful in springtime all year round but in springtime you see the wee lambs and see the calves out in the field loving life but don't go near those calves with their mother and that's what happens the cows were taken away the wee calves were locked up and all they could see was their mama walking off into the distance mama are you going to come back mama never come back those wee calves were reared by another cow or milk from someone else but that was a challenge the wee cow had to say goodbye. It's a cow licking his nose. Matt's doing that. Clean you, yeah. That's a hard thing to do. Scratch my nose, but can't put your tongue in your nose. But a cow can. Yes. You know what happens whenever you take a cow, calf off a cow? It roars and moves and bays and bays. That's what the Bible says. That's what they would normally do. But these two cows didn't bay. Sorry, they did bay. They roared. Their hearts were hurting because their calves. But God had spoke to the cattle and told them to walk. Don't turn back. While their hearts were bleeding and panting after their babies, they obeyed God. Each were the two cows walking in obedience to God as they walked off into the distance. That's what happens. These calves, the calves have just been taken off the cattle and they're roaring their bang after their little baby calves. That's what happens. They can't get out. It's impossible. Are put away, their weak calves are taken from them, and that's what happens in life. So these two cows were put onto a cart, and there, a cart was never on them before. So if you've done that, they would kick and jump and try to break free, but they never. They just stood in obedience. And whenever the Ark of the Covenant and other uh, items were put onto the cart, they were told to walk. And the Philistines followed the Ark, and they just walked and walked. They maybe, their eyes thought, where's my cow? They roared, but they never turned back. They never turned the cart around. They just kept walking straight because that's what God wanted them to do. And in an amazing way, such a wonderful testimony to the Philistine people as they watched in amazement as the cow, as the two cows walking off. Milking cows, just give birth to calves, were feeding their calves and I off they go into the distance. What does the Bible say? 1 Samuel chapter 6 verse 12 And the cows went straight in the direction of Bashemesh along the highway, lowing as they went, lowing, they were baying, they were roaring until they were hoarse, calling out for their calves, wanting their calves, but they knew they couldn't turn back. They knew they had to do something. And I thought that's a perfect, what a wonderful example when God tells you to do something. No turning back, no turning back. When God saves you, no turning back, no turning back. When God wants you to do something, no turning back, no turning back. It's easy to turn back. That would have been hard work. The sun was hot, pulling a cart for the first time along the rough ground. The, their loved one was at home, never to see it again. Off it went. Off it went in obedience to God's will. And I thought if, if God can use cows to do something for his glory, what can he do for with you? If you give your heart and life to him, submit to him. The boys and girls, a wonderful thing to be a Christian, a wonderful thing to be called of God to serve him. Do you see the moment you get saved, the will of God kicks into your life right away. God has a plan for your life. Let him, let him. Don't lament about life and the way things are going. Just get on with the Christian life. Get on with it. It's wonderful. Just look for every opportunity to do something for God. The more you do, the more you'll find you do. And the more you do, the more you'll be blessed. And the more you'll be blessed, the more you'll be want to be blessed. It's a wonderful thing to have the blessing of God upon your life and obedience to his will. Yes. So here's the two cows carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Just walking along the stony, bumpy ground. And not knowing where they're going, but God directed them. God guided them and they just walked in a straight line. The whole way through the Philistine country to the Israelite country. And here were the Israelites working in the fields. And they couldn't believe it when they saw it. At the first they thought it was strange. Here comes, here comes two walking cows and they thought, it's the Ark of the Covenant. God is going to bless us again. God has not forgotten us. And the Philistines followed it to the border, to this point. 
Whenever they saw it return, the people all came and they were so happy that God had once again had not forgot about them. God was going to bless them because the Ark of the Covenant was restored unto them. Read this wonderful portion in the book, in the Bible. It's wonderful. And how and Samuel, uh, how God was able to be, remember his people. And the Philistines even acknowledged they're going to get punished by God if they don't do the right thing. It's always do the right thing. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. That's a story today of two cows leaving their calves just born, leaving them at home, never had a cart on them before, and they were told to leave their calves, pull the cart, and walk in a straight line. And the cows obeyed, and off they went. What a challenge it is for me if God can use these cows to obey Him. What can they do with me? What can they do with you? If we will just in a simple way obey him as well. Wonderful, wonderful story. Let's do a quiz tonight. And we'll do a quiz about animals. Yes, you all like animals? Girls versus boys? Nine questions. So nine uh, animals will have four, four each. Girls, what animals did we talk about tonight? Cows. What do you want? Cow. Okay, start with a cow. Find them worth. Oh, I'm sorry, girls. I do apologize. Boys, what do you call a baby cow? A calf. Yes. What do you want? Chicken. He's a copy. What's it worth? 60. Girls, what do you call a baby? A young cow that's never had a calf before, or maybe a calf once. It's called a. Begin with H. A heifer. Yes. What do you want? A squirrel. What do you call Oh, my no. Oh dear, girls, have a good night for you tonight. Bedtime early tonight. Yes. Boys, what do you call a baby bull? A male cow. A bullock or a bullock. Yes. What do you want? A skipping uh, goat, that is, I think. 50, 110 versus minus 90. Girls, can you tell me in the story we talked about the Ark of the Covenant? What oh, name something was inside the Ark of the Covenant? The Ten Commandments. Well done. Pink Piggy. Okay. What's your worth? 50. Brings you to minus 40. Girls, or sorry, boys. The God, what do you call the two countries we talked about tonight? The Philistines and the Israelites. Yes, well done. What do you want? Sheep. Minus 30, so that's, ooh, it's getting close. You've got 80. Girls, last one. Girls, can you tell me whenever we talked about the story, the Ark of the Covenant, and we talked about the milk, whenever the wee calves were taken off the cows, and whenever they started to pull the cart, did the cows turn back for the calves? No, they didn't. Yes, you were the jammies, the pink jammies. Yes, you. The doves, or the horsey. Okay, horsey. What's your word? A hundred. That brings you to sixty. Boys have got eighty. But there's the last one. If it's a minus, it could be a plus. Boys, who can tell me? Uh, at the very start, we showed you a Bible verse that uh, finishes here. Desiring the sincere milk of the word. That's right. Having a desire to read and to obey the word of God. Doves are crows. The little pure doves. What's it worth? Uh, but no, <laughs> sorry, girls. 180. I'm going to give you an extra one, girls. I've done this last week, but the boys still won. Girls, who can tell me? We talked about uh, the cows uh, walking away in a distance. In a distance, what, what's that called when God tells you to do something and you do it? Starts with O. Oh. What do you call that? O oh, obedience. Wonderful. Right, girls. I'm going to give this here. Can you get it? Oh. <gasps> I can't believe it. 210 for the girls. 180 for the boys. Girls, because of the boys' kindness to you, you have won another. Um, let me tell you what's happening next week. Yes, before I forget, next week we're going to have a special Bible club. It's called the Lockdown Bible Club. And it's going to be on every day next week, like the regular assembly at 9 o'clock. It's going to be put up at 9 o'clock, but it's a wee bit longer, lots more singing. And it's going to be Bible story, singing, quizzes, uh, competitions, prizes. And we're going to do the life story of Joseph. Very, very good for children on our YouTube channel at 9 o'clock, Hope for Youth Ministries. Monday the 25th to Friday the 29th, that's next week at 9 o'clock. And the secret, the Lord was with Joseph. 
And we're going to give out prizes. These are all our books, so we're going to give out prizes. Lots of books given away next week. At the end of the competitions. And here's our contact details you'll be able to get next week. And don't forget our Sunday school, 9 at 10.30 on Sunday. A really good week this week looking at the book of Proverbs. Then back next Friday night, every day next week, 9 o'clock. So we finish with a song. What a mighty God we serve. God we said that's all for tonight thanks for watching and we're back Sunday and every day next week let's pray Father thank you so much for a Bible Club Friday night and we pray Lord you bless the boys and girls and such a wonderful story about the cows obeying God to walk in a straight line in your name we pray Amen